In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we gather this morning, we come on this 33rd Sunday of Ordinary Time, recognizing that next week that means we celebrate Christ the King and the end of the liturgical year, which begins again at Advent, a new liturgical year in preparation for Christmas. We pause, acknowledging now our sins, calling them to mind, asking the Lord for his mercy and for his grace to end this year well, this liturgical year well, and to begin the new one even better. We ask him for that mercy that we might be made worthy to celebrate and to receive these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness 
to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Lo, the day is coming, blazing like an oven, when all the proud and all the evildoers will be shoveled. And that day is coming who set them on fire, leaving them neither root nor branch, says the Lord of hosts. But for you who fear my name, there will arise the Son of Justice with its healing rays. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to you. Reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know how one must imitate us, for we did not act in a disorderly way among you, nor did we eat food received free from anyone. On the contrary, in toil and drudgery, night and day we worked, so as not to burden any of you. Not that we do not have the right, Rather, we wanted to present ourselves as a model for you, so that you might imitate us. In fact, when we were with you, we instructed you that if anyone was unwilling to work, neither should that one eat. We hear that some are conducting themselves among you in a disorderly way, by not keeping busy, but minding the business of others. Such people we instruct and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to work quietly and to eat their own food. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive of offerings, Jesus said, All that you see here, the days will come when there will be no there, when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. Then they asked him, Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you not be deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he. And the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified. For such things must happen first, but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines, and plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. Before all this happens, however, they will cease and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and, priests and to prisons, and they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead to you, to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand, for I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. Is that a little scary? Should be in some ways, I suppose, for us. It should remind us. That even uh, Saint Benedict used to say, "Keep death daily before your eyes." Why should we do that? Because we need to recognize that at any time, whenever in our lives that time will come for us or the end of time. We need to be prepared to go before the Lord. Now, that doesn't mean that we should be consumed by that thought. But at this time of the year, the end of the liturgical year, the church is wanting to intentionally remind us of the end of time. We know that those times will come. We don't know when they will come, but we know that they will come. The church is simply reminding us that we always need to be prepared. We often, uh, in the world in which we live, we hear of uh, something from uh, non-Catholics. It's something that was created in the, I think it was the 19th century, 1800s, I believe. Um, it's called the rapture, right? As Catholics, we call it the rapture trap because there is no such thing as rapture. In fact, there's even a, a meme that's out there on the internet. If any of you have Facebook, maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't. Uh, but it's a picture of Pope Emeritus, Pope Benedict Emeritus, and it has a, a quote over the top that says, um, the word purgatory is not in the scriptures. And the Pope's response is he's sitting there and there's this little bubble that pops up and it says, neither is the word rapture, but that's none of my business. Something that's 
created in a sense, kind of out of thin air, from that idea of there will be others left behind, right? One will be taken and one will be left. But Jesus is very clear in the gospel today also that the Christians that are there, and so the rapture idea is that Christians, people who are following the Lord, will not have to endure those end times. But that's not what Jesus just said, right? In the gospel that we heard either. That even though we are faithful, we'll have to endure those trials of the end times. But again, we can't become consumed by that. I've seen people at times even almost drive themselves crazy just constantly thinking about the end of time. Now it is important again to keep it in our minds so that we recognize that we don't, we can't be drifting away from the Lord. We have to stay close to him, right? So it's important to keep it in our mind but not to become consumed by it or obsessed with it. That's the point that I'm trying to make there. To keep it in mind, but not become obsessed. We hear even about that also in uh, the first reading from the prophet Malachi, who is also predicting what will happen. Lo, the day is coming, blazing like an oven, when all the proud and all evildoers will be stubble. And the day that is coming will set them on fire, leaving them neither root nor branch, says the Lord of hosts. You know what that reminded me of this last week when I read it for the first time? The forest fires that we just had, right, this past summer. And you think about, I mean, we had to deal with the consequences of that, inhaling all of that smoke, right? And our lungs are probably still recovering in some ways from that also. What, it, what caused all of that, though? Well, a lot of it is a lack of water. The trees and the shrubs that are out in the forest uh, were not getting the water that they're accustomed to getting. They get dried up, right? And then it's easier for a fire to burst out and burn through there, whether it's through lightning or human uh, causes or whatever it might be that's going on that starts the fires. What's the point of that? Why am I bringing this up? Well, we don't want to be like that stubble, right? So how is it that we can be prevented from becoming like stubble that's out there just drying out without, and I would say without Christ, right? And what I realized when we got to Wednesday, which Wednesday this week we celebrated uh, the feast of the dedication of St. John Lateran. So, when you think of uh, the mother church of all of Catholicism, of all of Christianity, what is the church that you think of? St. Peter's, right? That's wrong. <laughs> so, it's the one that we think of because it's the one that's most commonly seen also, right? And it's very huge and beautiful and all of those things. But actually, St. John Lateran is the cathedral church of Rome. So that's where the Bishop of Rome has his seat. That's where his authority springs from, right? That's that church, St. John Lateran. We celebrated the dedication of that church this last Wednesday. So that's the Mother Church of Rome. Now you know if there's a trivia question that's out there somewhere along the way, then you won't get it wrong now, right? But why I bring that up is because in particular on that day in the first reading, we heard about from Ezekiel, water coming out of the side of the temple. And it flows out of the, the temple, and everything that it touches, everything that is near the waters that flow from that temple, are alive. There's life that is there. Here's part of the description. Wherever the river flows, so the water becomes not just a little trickle, it starts as a little trickle, but it becomes this great river. Wherever the river flows, there is life. Along the banks of the river, roots of fruit trees are planted and given life because they are watered by the flow of the sanctuary. There is fruit for food, leaves for medicine, and living things multiply. Now, when we think of water flowing out of the side of the temple, we shouldn't think just of the Jewish temple in the Old Testament, right? 
what we should think of immediately in our minds is the side of Christ, which is pierced when he's on the cross. What flows out of Jesus' side when his side is pierced by the lance after he's died on the cross? Blood and water, right? There's Jesus founds the church even in that moment, and he does so very intentionally. He spoke about that throughout his life, that he was going to found a church against which the gates of hell would never prevail. And we trust in that promise that he gives to us. But it's that water that flows out from his side that founds the church. And in fact, even when we celebrate the Mass, when I'm preparing the altar or the deacon is preparing the altar, you'll see the servers bring up the water and the wine, right? The deacon takes the water and he pours just a little drop into the midst of the wine. And that itself is supposed to symbolize that piercing of the side of Christ and blood and water flowing out, which we will, in the Mass, receive then to give us life. It's the very sustenance that we need in the Eucharist that we receive. We're given the very life that we need, which is precisely what Jesus said to us in John chapter 6. If you do not eat my flesh or drink my blood, you will not have life within you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood will have life and have it in abundance. That's what God desires for us is life in abundance, not to be dried out stubble that's out in the forest, far from any kind of water source or nutrient source. The problem is that in the world in which we live, there are many things that can pull us out and away from Christ. And if we think of that river flowing right down the center here, right? We want to be close to that river, close to that life source so that we can bear fruit in our lives rather than becoming stubble. Because again, what happens to the stubble? It gets burned up. If we're outside of the church, we don't have that same promise that Christ gave us that the gates of hell would not prevail against the church. We don't have that same promise outside, away from the church. So when we're close to Christ and we're receiving the sacraments constantly, then we're receiving that very strength that we need, the nourishment that we need to be able to produce that fruit. But if we're drifting away, we're kind of like, in some ways, fruit trees as human beings, in a sense. But we're not stationary fruit trees, right? How many of you have ever seen the movie The Lord of the Rings? Raise your hands if you've seen The Lord of the Rings. Okay, so a good number of you. They call them tree ants, right? They can literally pick up and walk around, but they're really slow. <laughs> We're kind of the same way. We're kind of like tree ants. We can take and plant our roots right next to Christ, but sometimes we can also get lured away from that. And we're pretty slow moving, so we don't even necessarily recognize it. How many people, even in the Lord of the Rings, all of a sudden they would recognize this, but they don't recognize the trees moving at first. The same thing is true. And then, if trouble comes, fire comes, it's a lot harder to get away from that fire, right? And if we're out here, away from the source of life, and the source of water that we need, then we're already dried up in some ways. And it's going to be really hard for us to run back because we're slow movers. It's going to be really hard for us to run back and not set fire. So what do we need to do as Christians, as Catholics, especially when there's trouble raging around us, but in all aspects, all times of our life, to stay close to the source of life, the source of water, from which we can get a drink every time that we need it, every week when we come to Mass so that we're not just drifting off and becoming stubble that's going to be burned up in that fire. Where do fires end? Usually in the forests, large rivers, lakes, right? In the midst of the torments and the struggles of the world, when we again think of what all of the things that Jesus spoke about in the gospel today, in the midst of all of that, where do we go? We pick up our roots and we move right into the heart of the river. We allow ourselves to be immersed in the Lord Jesus, immersed in Christ. 
so that we can be protected also from all of the fires of the world that are raging around us. What did the Lord say at the end of the gospel? It seems like uh, something that contradicts itself also. You'll be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. We hear about those kinds of things even in the world in which we live also. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. How does that make sense? They will put some of you to death, but then it also says, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. What is he talking about? It seems to contradict itself, right? He's talking about eternal life. In destruction, there's, it's being wiped out so that you're no longer in existence. But Jesus is saying, even if you die for my name, for proclaiming the message of the gospel, not a hair of your head will be destroyed. Rather, you will receive even eternal life. By our perseverance, he says, we will secure our lives. And so we recognize our need to persevere in our life of faith, to remain close to Christ, so that we can not only, not, so that we can not only bear fruit, which we need to do as Christians, as Catholics, but also not get dried out and burned up. So we come before the Lord, seeking again the graces that we need another drink, week after week, so that we don't wander off from Christ, who is the source of our life. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathering again before you, Heavenly Father, we recognize our great need to receive your grace in our lives and the great need that our entire world has to be open to those graces. We offer then once again our prayers for ourselves and our great need and the needs of all the world that the Pope and the bishops will continue to proclaim the one Redeemer in the face of contradiction and opposition. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the suffering caused by war and terrorism may be ended by courageous and just people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the unemployed may find gainful employment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In gratitude for all those who returned their stewardship of treasure commitment card to our parish over the past few weeks, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick and suffering, especially Richard Felzer, Gabriel Morales, Mark Ristig, Emma Shogren, Paulina De La Torre, 
and her baby, and Richard Wagner, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus, the Son of Righteousness, will shine healing rays on those who have died, especially June Bright, Jose Gonzalez Lopez, and Charlotte Lundgren. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And to comfort Jesus Christ, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for the prayers in our Book of Intercessions, and for those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also, Lord, in thanksgiving for all the veterans as we just celebrated Veterans Day for their service and the protection of the freedoms of our country. May they know the gratitude we hold in our hearts for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also, Lord, for all of those who are just elected to political office and those who will continue in their service in political office, that they may have conversion of heart, mind, of soul in any way that they need it so that they may enact laws of true peace and true justice, seeking after the true and authentic common good and seeking to protect also the dignity and the sanctity of human life and of marriage. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear and answer these prayers in accordance with your holy will. For we ask them through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the Church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we believe that she's uh, having a medical episode of some kind, so I just gave her the anointing of the sick. The paramedics had already been called and are on their way, um, and she'll, she's in good hands, okay? So just we'll keep her in our prayers uh, for the rest of the Mass also, huh? But she's receiving the help that she needs.
Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Uh, before you go forth, some announcements. Um, first of all, uh, Patty is the name of the, the woman who is having the, having the medical episode there. Uh, it sounds like the paramedics were checking her out. She seemed to be doing fine. Um, but they're going to make sure that she is. So just keep her and her brother uh, was there with her. So uh, keep him also in your prayers. That might be the Lord calling. <laughs> on uh, this coming uh, Saturday, we're going to be working out uh, on the grounds, trying to pick up all of the leaves and the, the branches that are out there so people are... Uh, invited to come and help with that endeavor. It's always a, a fun day, but it's also a lot to do. So I don't know that all the leaves are going to come down on the uh, sh main street down there before um, that, but uh, that's just the way the weather has been. They're hanging on a little bit longer than usual. Remembering that uh, the Thanksgiving morning mass, which is just in a week and a half, will be at 8 a.m., and then we'll have a meal uh, in particular in the narthex at 11 a.m. It's especially for those who are in need. But anybody can come. If you don't have a family in the area and you want to come either to eat or to help serve, you're welcome to do that. A number of people have signed up already out in the narthex. The sign-up sheet is still out there to help with that. Uh, Barbecue Beer and Brothers, our men's group, will be meeting this coming Thursday at 6.30 p.m., um, there is someone who is making some Mexican food for us. He's an incredible cook, so you won't want to miss out on that uh, opportunity either. So, uh, again, you don't have to be a member. There's no membership card for the Barbecue Beer and Brothers. It's just a time for brothers to get together and to be able to build one another up in their life of faith. And the women's group met uh, this last Thursday. The Christmas giving trees are out in the narthex. If you haven't grabbed a tag already, please think about doing that also. And then um, they're asking that we have them back by December 4th at noon, right? Preferably before then, but to help us uh, in a timely fashion so that then they can organize things and, and get the gifts out to the appropriate places. So thanks to everyone who's taken one of those cards already. Um, and thanks to those who are going to today, maybe even after Mass. There's also a membership drive that the Knights of Columbus are doing out in the narthex, and they have uh, jars of cookie dough. You can buy the jars and then mix them together in a bowl, which I've, I've only made cookies once in my life. I know that might be hard to believe, but it's true. I've only made cookies once in my life. It was from, a, from one of those jars, and it was harder than I imagined. <laughs> I'll probably never make them again, but I might buy them as gifts for other people, right? So, all right. Then I'm going to ask you to please be seated for a moment, except those who have served in the military. For our veterans, if you would please remain standing. All veterans, please remain standing. So, first of all, we want to say thank you to all of you. Huh? So, thank you very much. then call down a blessing upon you also. Heavenly Father, we ask you, we call down your blessing upon these who have 
served in uh, the military here in this country or anywhere else that they may have served in the military also seeking to protect the freedoms of their the members of their country we ask you lord that you would bestow your many graces upon them upon their families to help them recognize also our gratitude and them standing up for the freedoms that we enjoy today may they continue to know your loving presence with them walking with them always healing them in any way that there if there is healing that is needed also they, that they may continue to walk that Christian life with the virtues even, hopefully, that they learned in their service in the military. And we ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So again, thank you to those who have served in the military. Then let's pray our uh, St. Michael prayer. Maybe praying for those who are still ser serving in the military for their protection especially spiritual protection. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.